بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس لیکچر وی ول کنٹینیو آر ڈسکشن آن پروسیس سنکرونائزیشن ان پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ سافٹ ویئر سولوشنس فار پروسیس سنکرونائزیشن اینڈ ہیئر وی ول بی ٹاکنگ آن ہارڈ ویئر سولوشن فار پروسیس سنکرونائزیشن As you all know that most of the hardware in our systems have single instances except for the memory as memory have multiple types so how single instance of hardware can be synchronized among different processes we will be talking on this topic in this lecture In previous lecture we have already developed a background on process synchronization and have understood critical section problem of process synchronization and software solutions both decker and peterson solutions have been discussed so in this lecture we will proceed for the hardware solution for process synchronization and see how it works critical solution can also be applied on hardware as we have already mentioned that there is single instance of different hardware in our system so it is important that they should be accessed one after another in order to keep the hardware consistent how this works any process that wants to access any hardware first it has to test the status of the hardware status here means if the hardware is available or not as you can see in the algorithm here you can see we have to first test the status of the hardware if hardware is available a lock is set on it by operating system on behalf of the process and the lock is set because if any other process during that tries to access same hardware it would find it under use or unavailable after utilizing the hardware the process releases the lock being imposed on the hardware so that other processes can see its status as available one process at a time will use the hardware so this point should be clear to you there are some common or classical problems of synchronization that are bounded buffer readers and writers and dining philosophers problem bounded buffer is used by all of you very commonly buffer as you all know is the temporary storage and you have used it in shape of different data structures for example you usually declare an array with specific size so array is being treated as a buffer the main reason to use defined array size is to keep memory safe from wastage now for example if you have declared an array of size 10 so you will be able to store only 10 items in the array 
you cannot store 11th item unless you create space for it in the array and this can be done by deleting one item from the array so this is an example of bounded buffer as we have defined a bound on how many items can be stored in the array unless an item is consumed you cannot store new item in the array consume here means creating space for the new item by deleting an existing item from the array we can see similar example in different other domains such as demand and supply chain works similarly the more the demand of a product is in market the more will be its supply once the demand goes low the supply will also go low so the buffer need to be bounded unless there is space for a specific item in market the supply of that item is not entertained once the consumption of specific item in market goes low or people have less tendency to purchase that product the production and supply of that product will also go low similar example can be found in case of readers and writers we can explain this problem with the help of database and websites the writers or developers of database and websites are few people normally one or few while the readers or users of the database and websites are millions readers are those who can only read the data or information from the database and website while the writers have both reading and writing access so at a time more than one readers can access the database and website but only one writer can perform writing on database or website this is because readers cannot modify the contents but writers can so more than one readings at a time can be done but writing at a time must be done by single writer if more than one writers try to bring change to the database or website at a time this will make the data or information inconsistent for the readers hence writing must be synchronized among different writers and writers should update the contents one after another in order to keep the data consistent for the readers dining philosophers is your assignment this is another synchronization problem so study and analyze it how it resolves the problem of synchronization the submission date of this assignment will be announced on kcms later on the last topic of discussion in the outline is inter process communication so let's now see what actually inter process communication has to say let's come to inter process communication we have mentioned in chapter 2 that this is one of the operations 
being performed on processes. What is inter-process communication? It is actually the exchange of data among two processes. The exchange of data is done normally to ensure the smooth functioning of your system without always involving operating system. Operating system facilitates inter-process communication by providing some resources such as message passing, message queues, semaphores and shared memory. We will be discussing some of them later on. Since operating system is now functioning in a distributed environment, so it further provides some more facilities to ensure inter-process communication. And the facility is application programming interface. Distributed environment is an environment where the computational resources are scattered over a network and your operating system needs help from another operating system on some network to resolve your problems. Remote procedural call is the best example of how two processes on different machines in a distributed environment help each other. One process on one machine sends request to another process on another machine who after receiving your request responds you back. Commonly Google works in this fashion. Your browser is a process on your machine that sends a request to Google which is another process running on another machine. Google receives your request, processes it and responds you back in your browser. Inter-process communication can be only performed under some predefined protocols on which both the sender and receiver agree before ensuring inter-process communication. Sender can be a sender at one time and it can be a receiver at some other time. Inter-process communication has two common types, unicast and multicast. If the communication is between two independent processes, it is known as unicast and we also call it point-to-point -point communication, the way we do in socket communication. While if the communication is from one process to group of other processes, this will be known as multicast. The way YouTube works on publish subscribe model. What you publish on your YouTube page will be notified to all your subscribers. The way you do send to all in your text messages or CC, BCC in your emails. This is the diagram showing unicast and multicast. If the communication is from one process to another single process, this will be known as unicast. And if the communication is from one process to group of other processes, this will be known as multicast. How inter-process communication is ensured? 
there are some resources as we already mentioned which are shared memory and message passing you all know we have discussed multi processor system in which more than one processors share one memory or ram so shared memory is actually referring to multi processor environment when one processor has to communicate with another processor so this communication must be done through this shared ram one processor leaves message in the ram and the destination processor retrieves the same message from same ram another resource is message passing and this can be done with the help of signals sender creates a message and sends it to the receiver how it works sender creates a message adds the destination address and sends it the way you type email address of the receiver type your email and send it the receiver not only receives the message but also the address or id of the sender so when receiver will respond back it will become sender and follow the same protocol of writing destination address or id with the message now the sender will become the receiver what sender will send will be received by the receiver so here you can see in this snippet you can see that x and y variables are actually pointing to the same message that was sent by the sender and received by the receiver this is just a snippet on how in programming we create send and receive functions your mailboxes is an example of a message passing with an approximation of shared memory mailbox works as a common storage for a person so whoever sends him a message that message will be stored in this common mailbox the way you all have your mailboxes both in your phones and attached with your emails the protocol for sending and receiving messages here again remains the same as we discussed in the previous topic that is it that is it here we come to the end of this chapter i thank you all